They're yours. Hit that one more time. I am, I am the, the number one determinant, number one determinant of, the success of the success or failure. Or failure. Here we go. Of my, of my student. Hey, y'all, you have a strong summer. Kick some butt next year. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. That's the mindset. That's the attitude. Love you guys. And we are live. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to week 114 of the Virtual AP Leadership Academy. Let me see who we got here this morning. We got my man, Ricardo Giannis, checking in first. Good to see you, sir, out there in sunny and hot Houston, Texas. We got... Uh, Takesha High, Lee Catherine Smith, uh, Marsha Poe is in the building. I'm glad you all, some of you are letting me know where you're coming from. So let me know where you're coming from. Appreciate you getting up so early, Marsha, out there in San Diego, California. Demetrius, oh, this thing just jumped like big. Let me go back. Here we go. Here we go. Dem my man, Demetrius Scott, is in the building. Yolanda McKinney's in the building. Central Hicks, Janine wilkins is in the building she's not all the way in alaska today she came a little closer she's in seattle so i still appreciate you for getting up so early this morning we got dr shika houston i just finished watching her and principal tammy taylor all the way to the end that's why i'm a little late a couple minutes because I, I watched them all the way to the end <laughs> right so uh good to see you dr houston stephanie gooden is in the building uh, Kiera Ed, uh, Ezel is in the building. Anthony St. John is in the building. Jennifer Mortvit Mapes, Dot McKeever, Jeter, who was on here a few months ago. Make sure you check her interview out with me. And also going back to Dr. Sheikah Houston and uh, Principal Tammy Taylor, we did an interview about, oh man, it's been a while, maybe a year ago. But uh, make sure you check those out. They're strong, strong interviews, dynamic interviews. Um, Portia. Ajiba, Ajigbo is in the building. I appreciate that too. My virtual mentor, Elaine Wells is in the building. Jeff Rapp, Carlos Baggage, my man. He just got a new position. I think that's confirmed. Maybe I shouldn't say too much yet, Carlos, because I, I don't, I don't, I don't know if that was confirmed. I think it is. So I'll, I'll come back to that next week unless I see something in the chat and I can blow it up. Jessica Coleman's in the building. Laura Mayer, Lysandra Brackens, Golfar, WT, Alan Cowart, Rodney Richardson. Principal Tammy Taylor, soon to be Dr. Principal Tammy Taylor, is in the building. D. Gonzalez Bernal is in the building. Yo Derek, all the way up in Minneapolis, is in the building. Lily Lanier, Teresa Thacker, she got to now. I know uh, Teresa Thacker just got her principalship, so congratulations publicly now to Teresa Thacker. Uh, John Herricks is in the building. Kimberly Carruthers. Principal, my man, Otis Kitchen the second is in the building. Karima Anque bringing, uh, bringing North love into the building. Dr. Melissa Chester, you know, we got every time I see her name, I know she, I know, I know she's on here to remind me. We got the virtual, the Black Educators Rock virtual um, conference coming up July 9, 10, and 11. So that's like this weekend, July 9, 10, and 11. We got, man, we got some powerhouse folks on there, man. My man, Dr. Chica Houston, uh, Dr. Chica Houston, my man, Dr. Chike, uh, Akua, Sean Hurt, Carlos Johnson, um, uh, Marcus Jackson, myself, Dr. Chester, um man there's so many on there i can't even think of phil hickman who else man I, you see when you drop names without a list and you leave people out man and i oh my god it's look um i'll put the link on my page again but you you can you can google black educators rock um i think it's black educators rock.org um it's free all you gotta do is register but uh i'll put the link up on my page right after this it's actually on my page but you gotta scroll down it's a whole poster with all of us on there but um, I'll put it up there. So just look out for that. 
Um, that's coming up this weekend, July 9, 10, and 11, led by our fearless leader, Dr. Melissa Nolan Chester. Um, Robin Robinson is in the building. Vanessa Deskin is in the building. Kathy Dal Dalamonte is in the building. Rashad Davis out there in Vegas. Some of my folks will be out there um, at the Innovative Schools Conference this week. Uh, Rashad, so if you get get over there to Caesars, I think they're going to be at, they'll be there. I won't be there, but they'll be there. Uh, Michael Benton's in the building. Tashara Smith-Kelly, Jocelyn Nelson, Grace Castaneda. Man, it's 1103. I'm getting ready to get it going. Whitney Smith is in the building. Asia Burnett, Lathan TL, Siobhan Jackson. That's Principal Siobhan Jackson, man. We got my man, Dr. Tommy Mabry in the building, man. I ain't seen you on here in a minute, Tommy. Good to see you. Good to see ya. Yeah, Tommy Mabry is one of my colleagues out here doing this work. So if you don't know Dr. Tommy Mabry, uh, get over to his page and, and um, follow him, friend him, whatever it is. He's on Instagram as well. I'm not on Instagram anymore. I took myself off of there, man. I, I, I found no enjoyment, no entertainment with being on Instagram, right? So not no, no shade at Instagram. It just wasn't my cup of tea, right? So I'm, I'm Twitter and Facebook and then obviously YouTube. I'm on LinkedIn, but I don't use it. But with that said, uh, let me get started, y'all. We got a lot. To, I, man, I, I got a lot to talk about. I, I, I got to shout out my man, Josh Tovar. Just saw his name, MPA Jaguars. Got to do that, man. That's 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 my man. He, and he, I interview him. I know the number of his video because he says it every week. Video number 70, right? So we had to do it in two parts because I had a slip of the fingers and shut us down and had to start all over. So it's in two parts. But uh, check that one out, too, with my man, Josh Tovar. We talk in social media. Hey, y'all, let me say to you, good morning. Greetings. Welcome to week 114. Can you believe it? 114 of the virtual AP Leadership Academy. And as I always say, you know, I'm not going to say it the way I typically say it, but as I always say, I don't know about you, but I know about me. But I think I know about you. But if I can just let you know how I feel, I can't do it with the kind of energy. I'm going to tell you why, like I told you last week, but I am on fire. I want you to know that I'm blazing. But, you know, we are we are still grieving the loss of my brother in law, David Broughton. So I want you to continue to pray for my wife, Kimberly Broughton Kefele. And I want you to pray for her father, my father-in-law, Samuel Broughton. Just keep us in your prayers, y'all. The funeral has not occurred yet. So that's, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's been kind of stretched, you know, family and all that kind of thing. And, you know, so that'll be next Friday here in Jersey. But uh, just, you know, so I'm not I'm not doing all that, you know, all that I'm on fire, all loud and all that right now. But I want you to, uh, you know, keep us in your prayers, right? The whole family, you know, a lot of us grieving. You know, this was sudden. It was unexpected. I just saw him. We all just saw, you know, this this wasn't one of those things where, you know, we were we were ready and prepared for a transition of a loved one. This was one that came out of nowhere. The last time I saw my brother in law, I was outside doing some weed killing. Right. Uh, just some weeds outside and I'm killing them. And he drove by and cracked the joke on me. You don't know what you're doing and, and, and kept going. And that's the last time I saw him, you know, so everything was all good. So keep us in your prayers. Let's go, y'all. Um, again, today is uh, week four, 114. We're in the midst. As a matter of fact, hit the share button. Hit the retweet button for me. Let folks know uh, I got a lot to say today. Uh, matter of fact, I'm in it now, but let me say this to you as I start. I wrote a post a few minutes ago, about an hour ago, sitting on my steps, just getting my, myself mentally prepared for this morning broadcast. And, 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 and I started talking about just... Um, your relationship with God, how if, if 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 you have a relationship in which you know that God orders your steps, and maybe sometimes when you're trying to move in different directions, uh, people don't understand that because they don't understand your relationship with God, right? Well, that's 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 where I am, right? And 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 sort of in conjunction with that, I didn't have a message yet for this morning. I didn't know exactly where I was going. I tried to do it last night. But I, but I couldn't get it the way I wanted to. And then this morning, it hit me, bam. And I, and I got it right. And I said, you know, today is July 2nd. We're in the July 4th weekend. Those of you that have been with me for a while, you know who I am. You know what I am in terms of who I am personally as it relates to history, as it relates to culture, 
politically, that type of thing. And, and my approach educationally re relative to it being culturally responsive, culturally relevant, equity, social justice, education. You, you know that if you know my work. If, if, if you don't know that about me, then you don't know my work. You haven't read my books. You haven't read my articles. You're not on this platform, et cetera. But if you know me, then you then you know me. Right. So, you know, that on a July 4th weekend, I, I've got to, you know, I'm taking I'm not even calling my message. You know, I, I typically say my motivational message before we get started. But I, I'm kind of transitioning it out of that language and I'm calling it my commentary and my commentary may be motivational from time to time. But uh, my commentary and I pulled the book off the shelf last night and I want to show it to you. It's called The Life and Writings of Frederick Douglass. Volume two, pre-war decade, right? So pre-war decade, so the 1850s, right? So, and, and before I even get into this, let me show you the thickness of this book, right? I got a pen here because I'm going I'm to I'm share something with you in it. But see the thickness of this book. This is the, this is the life and writings of Frederick Douglass. But this is volume two. I took off my shelf just to show you. Uh, I'm not in, yeah, let me go in sequence. This is volume one, the early years. We're talking about the life and writings of Frederick Douglass. And each of these are very thick with small print. This ain't like the books I write, right? Small print, very thick books. This one is 100, 400, this is 440 pages. So they're all averaging that. So this is volume one. Volume two is the one I'm going to read from today. This is 572 pages. Volume three the Civil War, and again, the life and writings of Frederick Douglass. This is 448 pages, and I've read all these. When I pulled them off the shelf last night, I said, wow, I sure did underscore a whole lot in all five of these volumes, so I really took these volumes seriously. This is volume four, Reconstruction and After. This one is 568 pages, and then volume five, 1844 to 1860, and this one is 546 pages. So my point is this. And, and again, those of you that tune in with me, I'm going to get to the leadership. But, I, but we're, we're in the 4th of July weekend. So I want you to hang in here with me for a minute. Right. Don't don't leave me. Oh, you're not relevant. Today. No, I'm relevant. I ain't never going to come on here and not be relevant. If I'm talking about Frederick Douglass on 4th of July weekend, I am relevant. Right. So here we go. I said today's July 2nd, we're in the July 4th weekend, Independence Day, and there's something in the world called critical race theory. And, and there's this huge nationwide hysteria about something called critical race theory. And I don't have that hysteria because critical race theory, number one, has never been in public schools, charter schools, private schools, any schools where children are K-12. And it's not necessarily relevant to the 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 k the the k-12 community what is relevant is american history in its fullness you and i in school have only been exposed to american history marginalized right so so we get bits and pieces distortions omissions marginalization but we don't necessarily get the fullness of it. So, so here, obviously, if I'm talking about Frederick Douglass, I'm talking about an African American. But I don't, I haven't been using the language lately. African American history, Black history. I haven't been using that lately. I've been saying American history because anything that happened as it pertains to Black people in this country, it's American history. If it happened in the U.S. It's American history or U.S. history. If it didn't happen here, then we, we, we can call it black history or we can identify with where it happened. But if it happened in this country, in the U.S., in America, whatever it is, whether it be something that happened or something, you know, something great that took place, whatever it is, it happened. It happened within the shores of America. So it's American history. So with that said. For those of you on this on, on the platform this morning who may not fully understand that everybody doesn't see the 4th of July the same way. 
Well, the reason that folks would not see the fourth the, the fourth of July the same way is because they have historical knowledge as opposed to historical amnesia. See, when you have historical amnesia, you don't know the past. So therefore, anybody can tell you or sell you on anything and you will fall for it because you have no foundation upon which to stand. But when you have a historical slash cultural foundation upon which to stand, then what you are exposed to in contemporary times is going to be rooted in what you know historically. Someone may have missed that, so let me say it again. If you are historic, if you have historical understanding, if you have a historical base to stand on, then whatever you are exposed to in contemporary times is going to take shape, form, meaning, and definition based on what you know historically. But if you don't know historically, whatever this is that's happening contemporarily, then it doesn't make sense to you or, you're, or you have a false understanding of what it is. Let me give you this example. There's a group of educators that I'm sure you read because I got intelligent people that are on here that read. I know that. But if you read or heard that there's a group that's working with the, the Texas Board of Education, State Board of Education, advising them, and, and a part of what part of the work they're doing they're looking for a substitute for the word slave. Now, I don't use the word slave myself. I say enslave because I don't want to leave out the one that did the enslaving, right? So I don't just say slave because slave implies a natural condition. So I don't want to imply a natural condition. So I always say enslave. So therefore, we never leave out who did the enslaving, right? But, but Texas wants to wants to remove this this group of educators, not Texas, this group of educators want to remove the word slave and replace it with involuntary relocation, as Yolanda McKinney just wrote. Involuntary relocation. I want you, I want you to think about that now. So now the people who were enslaved, who were robbed of their land, robbed of their history, robbed of their culture, Rob, robbed of their language, robbed of their humanity, right? And I can keep going. You got a force out there that want to take that and rephrase it, reframe it. They weren't slaves. They were involuntarily relocated. So all that implies now is that a people were involuntarily removed, so forced and relocated somewhere else, but it does not imply that they were stripped of their humanity. So according to the Constitution, they were considered three-fifths of a human being. So, so therefore, they were rendered subhuman, right? Subhuman. That, so, so, but you can't get that out of. I, I, man, I hope some of my non-African-American friends out here, colleagues out here who are watching or learning. I hope, I hope there's nobody say, I don't want to hear this today. This is CRT. I, I hope that's not happening on this platform. Because see, if 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 there was somebody, particularly my non my non-black colleagues and friends and family of the virtual AP Leadership Academy, and somebody cut out on me for because of this content, then you're not my friend. You ain't you ain't down with me. You're not my family. Right. In terms of my virtual family, you're not my family. If if if, if this is stinging and someone said, I, I can't I can't be here. Right. I can't be here to listen to this. That means you ain't down with me in my fullness. You just down with me on a Saturday morning, giving out content. See, I need folks to come on this platform that you down with me thick and thin. Right. That's 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 what I'm talking about. You 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 not just oh cafe going to help me to get to another level in my leadership. Cafe going to help me to get a job. No, if, if that's the only way you down with me, then you ain't down with me. You using me. See, I want people on here that if I deviate from the norm and I get a little hard hitting, you still right there. You still rocking with me. That's who I want on this play. If you if you can't rock with me through anything, this ain't for you, man. You 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 go to somebody else.
right? I need folks when I when it's time for me to really take care of business like I'm doing right now. You 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 got to be here with me. Hit that share button, man. Hit that retweet. Let them know Kafele. He gonna get to the the topic, but I gotta deal with July Fourth first, right? I gotta deal with history first. I got I I got I gotta deal with with historical amnesia first. And then I'll get back. I'll get back to the leader because we're talking leadership communication details, man. We're going to get to that because it's important. But this is July 4th weekend. And let me tell you something else, leaders. I'm not saying anything offensive right now. I'm not saying anything outlandish right now. I'm talking American history. Hey, leader watching me right now. Hey, my Aunt Cynthia is in the building. Stay here, Cynthia, because we're getting ready to hit this thing, man. Don't leave. Tell Chico, get on here. If Marcus is in the crib, tell him to get on here too, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm saying this to you. This information, these books, and the ones over there and the ones down there, these are what made me. I see, I mean, I see the, the chatter on, on social media. I, I see it when I'm out live speaking to people. Folks want to take a selfie, man. Folks telling me I only came to the conference to hear you. And and and, and I tune in faithfully on Saturday because I'm down. With, I hear that, y'all. But, but you got to understand what made me. I wasn't always this guy. My mother's on here. She knows. I wasn't always this guy. I, I morphed. I transformed because of these books. I discovered history. I would have never worn a, a, a Birmingham Black Barons Negro League shirt back in the old days. I appreciate you, Tammy. Right? I, I would have never done that. But I read this history, man. I studied this history. And it changed me because it was an aha. Like, what? Oh, you mean we... We did that. We built this. We created that. We came from this. We came from that. Oh, my God. I didn't know. So I went hard in my understanding, my, in my learning, man. I, I, I went hard. My Aunt Cynthia is on here now. I started wearing dashikis every day, man. Changed my name. I wasn't born Baruti Kafele. Changed my name. Baruti means teacher, comes from Botswana. Kafele means worth dying for, comes from Malawi. I, I, I gave it a little, 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 little twist. I said the struggle for, for the liberation of the minds of our children is worth dying for, man. I made that my legal name. My daughter's sitting right here. That's her legal name. She was born into it. See, so, so, so if you love Kafele, Principal Kafele, you got to know Principal Kafele was reborn in 1984 when he came into this knowledge of history, man. So if you're down with Kafele, you got to be down with my transformation. So I'm saying that to say, don't cut out of here, right? We're getting ready to get to it, but I, I want to read something to you. Frederick Douglass, I'm on, I'm on this book now, right? Frederick Douglass, and then I'm going to get to my topic. I get like this every 4th of July. Frederick Douglass was supposed to give a speech on July 4th, 19, I mean, sorry, 1852. July 4th, 1852. And he was invited by the Rochester, New York. It was the, the, the ladies of Rochester or Rochester ladies um, anti-slavery society. So he was supposed to give this speech because, you know, he's an abolitionist after he escaped. One of the most brilliant people, forget about black people, men, women, one of the most brilliant people America has ever seen. You just read these five volumes and you'll know that, right? Just read these five volumes. And I showed you the thickness because that's his writings and speeches. That's a whole lot of, that's a whole lot of language there. Yo, those of you that tuned in late, just rewind later on and you'll see what I mean, what I was talking about. But he said he was supposed to give it on July 4th. He said, I can't give this speech today. Let me tell you why. Because he said, now I'm giving you American history. When I tell you this, ask yourself, why did why is it on July 2nd, 2022, 
I'm learning this from Principal Kefale. I'm 20, I'm 25 years old. I'm 35 years old. I'm 45, I'm 55, I'm 65, whatever however old you are. Why am I learning what he's about to say on July 2nd, 2022, when I've been teaching for 20 years? I've been leading for 10 years, whatever it is. You superintendent out there watching. You, you, you assistant superintendent, you principal, you assistant. Why you should ask yourself? I got my big mirror today. You should ask yourself. Why am I learning this today when I should have known it when I was yay high? Frederick Douglass was asked to give this speech on July 2nd, I mean, July 4th, 1852. And he said, no, hit that share button, man. Hit that retweet, hit them Facebook groups, man. Sometimes they talking about stuff that's relevant, but they ain't talking about this, Right. Hit that share button. Hit that retweet button. Let them know. Kefele in here. And by the way, he wearing a Willie Mays jersey. People say, you see Willie Mays, you thinking about the San Francisco Giants. No. And that's when I told you before about that history. If you don't know the history, then you don't know the, you don't know the contemporary. Yeah, he played for the San Francisco Giants, but his roots was with the Black Birmingham Black Barons because he couldn't get into the, the, the major leagues at the time. He had to play in the Negro Leagues. See, you got to know the history, man. You can't just know the contemporary because the contemporary don't make sense if it's not rooted in the historical foundation. So now he said, no, I can't give this speech today. He said, because this 4th of July that you're celebrating is yours, not mine. Let me do that again. Frederick Douglass couldn't get that speech on July 4th, 1852, because he said, this 4th of July that you celebrating about, this is yours, not mine. What did he mean? It was Independence Day for America, celebration. That's what this 4th of July, Independence Day is all about. But black people were not free. Black people were maintained in enslavement for the next 87 years, a whole generation and some. Until 1863, which, which we can argue, which I won't get into history now, that history. We could also go to 1865, or we can go to the 13th Amendment, right? So I'm saying to you, so he gave the speech instead on July 5th. He said, I ain't giving the speech on, Ju on, on, on July 4th. I'll give the speech on July 5th, right? So he gave the speech. And, and there's an excerpt here that I have to read to you. And then I promise to get to my topic. <laughs> he said, what to the American slave is your 4th of July? Now, before I go any further, let me repeat myself. I'm just sharing some American history. And I hope that there are folks with a mirror up right now saying, why am I just learning this today with this man? Why didn't I already know this? What to the American slave is your 4th of July? And, I, and that word your, I got to emphasize. He said, I answer a day that reveals to him more than all other days in the year the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is the constant victim. To him, your celebration is a sham, your boasted liberty and unholy license, your national greatness, swelling vanity, your sounds of rejoicing are empty and heartless, your denunciation of tyrants, brass fronted impudence, your shouts of liberty and equality, hollow mockery your prayers and hymns your sermons and thanksgivings with all your religious parade and solemnity are to him mere bombast fraud deception impiety and hip hypocrisy a thin veil of to cover up crimes which would disgrace a nation of savages let me say that again a thin veil to cover up crimes which would disgrace a nation of of savages there is not a nation on earth guilty of practices more shocking and bloody 
than the people of the United States at this very hour. Whew. Let me tell y'all something, man. This speech is like, it's like 20 pages long. It's, it's long. That's just a piece, y'all. That's thank you, thank you, Cynthia. That's 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 just a piece, y'all. But see, I, I want to holler at the one that says, I want to holler at two people. I want to holler at the critical race theory people first. The critical race theory people would would probably have my license suspended if I shared this in the classroom, right? It, 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 see, see, the critical race theory they they don't want this told. This Frederick Douglass, not in 2022, this Frederick Douglass in 1852 said, this holiday ain't for us. Your holiday is a sham. He said in 1852, because in 1852, black people are enslaved. Not slaves, enslaved. See, that's what he said. But it's two. So, so let me holler at somebody. Somebody say, but Kefele, man, it's 2022. The world has changed. Do we erase that history? Or just the portions of history that make people uncomfortable? See, if we're going to erase history, erase it all. But we know we're not going to do that. So therefore, tell or teach the fullness of the story. See, it's 2022. I get, you know, I, I think the word I was getting ready to use, depressed, that would be too strong. But I'm bothered. I'm bothered by black people that, that fly fireworks this on the 4th of July. I'm bothered by that. I'm not depressed by it. I'm not stressed by it. But I'm bothered by it. What are you, what are you blowing fireworks for? On the 4th of July, historically, this ain't for you. What are you celebrating by, by, by throwing fireworks, uh, lighting firecrackers and all that all over the place? I'm not anti the 4th of July. Like we have our cook our cookout with the family. I don't know if we're having it this year. But 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 that's that's like tradition. I'm talking about historically now. I'm saying they got like I don't know how it is in different parts of the country, but where I am here in Jersey City. They got pop-up fireworks stores, like tents. They just pop up out of nowhere. So now you got all these people spending all this money buying all these fireworks. Crap that'll blow your friggin' hand off, right? So buying all these fireworks for this season. Like this should be a season of mourning, if anything. How you, how, I mean, how you going to get go hard on Juneteenth and then you firing up firecrackers on July 4th a few weeks later. I mean, think about think about the insanity to that. How are you going to be fired up on Juneteenth? Oh, that's, you know, that's, you know, and, you know, I got my views on that, right? But that's our emancipation day. That's our real liberation day. That's our real freedom day. Yeah. That's our real freedom day. Okay, how are you going to go hard on Juneteenth? And then you buying firecrackers and lighting them up and keeping people up and wait at night all night long with fireworks on July 4th, like two, three weeks later. Do you hear the insanity in that? Do you hear the absurdity in that? But see, that's because when 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 he, when the person, I'm, and I'm talking black folks right now, when you when you go out and buy them fireworks for in the context of the fourth of July. That's because you ain't read nothing like this. Because if you read something like this, your spirit won't allow you to go into the fireworks store. Your spirit will stop you. Your spirit will say, pump the brakes, dummy. That ain't the place for you right now. Go get a book and read your history. Know who you are in history. Walk on your history, historical foundation. That's what it would say to you. You wouldn't be going, so, oh man, we got a rocket. Right, could make, a, make fireworks like the real, oh, come on, man. Do you know your story? Do you know your history? Do you know what your ancestors were experiencing on July 4th, 1776, 
77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, and I can keep going. 93, right? 1793, 1833, it's still happening. Generations later, man, and you blowing, you, you, you buying fireworks? Come on, man. Come on. Now, I'm going to tell you all something. I was only going to do this for five minutes. God said, because I listen to God. That's, that's, that's the type of God I am. That's the type, that's the type of dude I am, man. God, I, you like, like I wrote on the post this morning. This is what I was trying to tell you all on my Facebook post. I said, when I started this thing, it was meant to be 18 weeks. I did not know I had, I'm in year three now. I didn't know I had over two years of content. I ain't that brilliant. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I'm not that genius. Like, but 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 then I just I just let I I, I like I, I I treat myself as a vessel, an empty vessel. I said, let, let me just let God use me. So God kept giving me all this new stuff, man. I'm writing books after this thing started. I'm like, that's God, man. I posted yesterday. I got three new volumes of the assistant principal. Uh, 50 that I'm getting ready to write. I didn't even have, if I had that content when I wrote the assistant principal 50 back in 2020, I would have put it in there. I didn't have that. Now I got volume two, three, and four in my head. That's God, y'all. I just let God use me. And that, so, so God getting me, use me. I just write. It ain't even me, really. I just write, man. God, give me words. Give me words. Give me words. I just write. When I when I came up with this whole protecting, that some of you are, for, you know what I'm saying when I say protect. That's God, man. I ain't have that. I told my wife two days ago, I didn't have none of that. Two days later, I got 105 different categories. See, but see, that's because I let my spirit move me. I ain't trying to get religious on here and spiritual. Somebody would say, all right, man, he going too far this morning, man. This is not what he got in that title. It says leadership communication detail, right? Where, where could Fele at this morning, man? Let me tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, then I'm going to step off of it. Listen, y'all, you know how, like, you got your pet peeves. You, you know how, like, certain things just irk you, right? July 4th gets under my skin, man. <laughs> I, I, and, and, and can nobody out there accuse me of being un-American I'm about as American as they come my, my ancestors fought for this bad boy you think I'm going to turn my back on it let me give you something else they didn't tell you in your history class upwards of 9,000 black soldiers fought in the American Revolution there is somebody watching right now you didn't know that you thought they were all enslaved on plantations. You didn't know that 9,000 was holding them, what they call them thing, muskets, right? You, 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 you didn't know that. Somebody watching or someone who will see the video, 9,000 black troops on the Continental Army side, 20,000 on the British side. I'm not even at the Civil War yet. Because that ain't got nothing to do with America, with, with Independence Day. Right. So so like it's like when 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 that July 4th start creeping up, man, I'm like, man, here come the lie. Here come the lie. Independence Day. Here come the lie. Right. Here come the black folks running out, buying fireworks. Here, here it come. Here they come keeping me up all night with these rockets going off all over the place in the city. Here it come. And see, 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 I got that historical thing happening with me. So I'm, I'm sitting there like, damn, I'm excuse my language, but damn, I got I got to be subjected to this now. Right. They sell they out this. I, I feel like it's like like getting a, a megaphone like, yo, yo, y'all just come together, man. Let me read this. Let me read this Frederick Douglass book to you. Like 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 all of y'all just come on in to me. Let me read this Frederick Douglass book to you and see if you still feel comfortable in, in, in flying these rockets all night. That's just me, though, y'all. I see Dr. Chester says she thought it was just her, right? But it's, 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 no, nah, it's, it's me too, Doc. It's something about this, this July 4th, and it's something about this Thanksgiving, man, that I just get, I get funky, man. You know, it, it just, 
It just gets under my skin. Yeah, yeah, Anthony, I mean, Anthony St. John, yeah, 20,000 black men fought for the, for the British side because they were promised their freedom, which most of them didn't get. And then on the English, on the uh, continental side, 9,000. I wish I had the book sitting here, but it's on my other shelf. Africa's Gift to America by J.A. Rogers. I can cite anything I say. Africa's Gift to America by J.A. Rogers. Order it on Amazon. All right, y'all, I'm done with that. I hope uh, everybody's still here. It's it's 1137. You know, I could still smile, man. You know, that's just my nature, man. I could drop I could drop some heavy stuff and still smile, man. That's 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 that's, that's people skills, y'all. That's 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 how you got to be. Look here, y'all. Welcome to the first timers. This is not what we do every Saturday. First timers. This is a July 4th special. Right. So, um, you know, so 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 normally we you know, we talk virtual AP leadership. But here we are in this space today. Um, welcome to the first timers. For those uh, sessions that you missed, probably if you're your first time or probably all of them, go to my YouTube virtual AP leadership academy and um, channel and watch the previous 113 issues. The School Leadership Academy, man, I want y'all to join me in Charlotte. It's next week, not this week coming, but the next week, July 12 and 13. Come join me, man. We're going to be there nine to four, both days, right? Nine to four. Come on out there to Charlotte, man. Go to my, go to principalcafele.com. Scroll down my homepage to where it says school Leadership account. Oh, you're gonna be there, Dr. Houston. Wow, I'm looking forward, Matt. I didn't know you was coming. So, so um scroll down and uh you'll you'll see the link. Click the link and then join me in Charlotte for two days, man. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna be live and in person, man. You know, come I'm gonna say it again. Come on down. Right? It's not gonna be me, me, it's not gonna be me preaching from nine to four. We're gonna be interactive. You guys are gonna have opportunity to do a heck of a lot of talking to each other at your tables, to me. You know, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna make it fun, right? So uh come on down and get and get with me um on July 12th and 13th, Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, congrats to all the folks that landed the positions. Uh hey, Chris Gaston, man. <laughs> Yo, you, 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 you a, a Principal Gaston, you distracted me. You know, y'all, I had Principal Chris Gadsden on, um, July on January uh, during King weekend, and I, you know, I, his view counts not what I wanted it to be because it was a King focus, and people see it as a King video, so they're not. They, 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 I guess it'll get relevance again next year during King weekend, but. Chris Gaston, Principal Gaston here in Jersey City, he's one of the baddest principals around, y'all. I just got to tell you, he's a bad man. I said I had to send him a random text yesterday. I was walking up from here to my father-in-law's house, and I just, Chris Gaston popped in my mind when I got to Audubon Park in Jersey City. I said, Chris doing his thing, man. Let me, let me text this dude, man. And just randomly text him. I said, man, keep up with what you're doing, man. You, you, you're doing next level leadership. Right. I mean, he could probably you 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 probably need to call Chris Gaston. He he's not a professional consultant, but you might be able to make him one. You might want to go to his page, Chris Gaston on Facebook, and and see if he could come out to your school and talk to y'all about about our uh, climate and culture. Now he's not a professional presenter, but he's a professional principal, and that's all that matters. Some people who are professional presenters, they don't know anything about the real work. They just have the gift of gab. They talk very well but they haven't done the real work. So 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 they can't so they can talk to you out of their gift of communication, but they can't talk to you out of their passion of having done the work at a high level. See, those are two different people. So so I respect the one that has the gift. Yeah, you know, I'm do, do your thing. You know, I ain't going to knock nobody. I ain't going to I ain't going to reach into nobody's pocket and take their money from them. But I'm going to tell you it's it's just a different experience when it's someone who walked the walk. See, that's 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 a different experience from the one that just read the books and, and got the communication skills, and then they come and dazzle you, man. Oh, they dazzle you with their stuff, but they ain't never do this, man. Chris Gasson could stand up on the stage and I'm gonna use a slang and, and spit the rhyme with the with the with the students, and they're gonna rock with them. 
Because see, if you if, if you ain't spitting right, the students ain't gonna rock with you. And I'm using slang. If you're not rapping right, the students ain't gonna rock with you. But but Chris Gasson get up on the stage with his kids, start spitting rhymes. He wrote. He ain't Drake, ain't no ghostwriter, right? He writes his own rhymes, and then he could get up on the stage and rock with his students. Do you know how that endears him to his students when he can relate to them and they relate to him on that level? Do you understand that? You better go to Chris Gaston's page. He'll probably come cheap because he don't know nothing about price and consumption. <laughs> <laughs> he don't know nothing about pricing this stuff because he don't do it professionally. You could probably get Chris Gaston for like twenty dollars. <laughs> so, so reach out to Chris. <laughs> uh, Yolanda, he's in Jersey City, New Jersey. Reach out to Chris Gaston. <laughs> he probably pay for his own flight. <laughs> so, reach out to Chris. And, and tell him you need, I need you to come to my school. <laughs> hey, Chris, I'm going to school you on pricing, man. <laughs> Let me get to it, y'all. I'm done. Listen, I'm done with my announcements. Last first Saturday. Y'all still here, man. I'm glad. Hit that share button. Hit that retweet button, man. Hit that for me. Hit that for me. Hey, hey, Chris, I see your name popping up all over the place. They getting ready to call you, brother. Right? So get ready. Get ready. Um, on on Saturday, the first Saturday of June, I, I I started my whole protecting your X, Y, and Z. Right. So we started with this with communication. So we went communic verbal communication with a focus on the staff meeting, and we talked about written communication in all forms. You'll remember that if you didn't see it, right? Yeah, you, you, you got that spelling on Chris Gaston. Yeah, you got a G A D S D E N. Right. He he now now he's not a professional speaker, but he is an orator. Don't get me wrong. He's an orator. Everybody in the city of Jersey City knows that. <laughs> right. Because he because he's because he's not just an educator. He's an activist. Right. So um, he's a principal in Jersey City and his name is right on the thread. G.A.D.S.D.E.N. Chris Gadsden. Check him out. That's that's when you talk about authenticity, you don't get no more authentic than that because this man is not a professional presenter. He might become one now after today, right? But he but he but that's not what he does. He just leads his school and 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 then he's out in the community making sure that folks folks' rights are being met, right? That there's justice for everybody in Jersey City. That's what he does. All right. So anyway, so today I want to continue that communications talk. Um, I'm calling it leadership communication details so we're talking the details of communication which is a part of your overall people skills now i know i spent a lot of time frederick Douglass, um and, and other things but 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 I, and I i got a lot on my agenda here maybe i have to go two weeks but um if we do then we just do um but here we go i'm, I'm jumping right into it i got 18 items i want to share with you and the first one is called protecting your commitment to inspire just, just write that down. You know, I don't give you anything to write. Uh, I don't give you any 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 text for you to copy because, you know, my, my clients pay me good money to have PowerPoints. So I don't want to replicate what I do for them when I'm doing a free broadcast on a Saturday. Right. So uh, you so you got it. You got it. You got it. You got to take notes like young lady last week had eight pages of notes. So you got to do it that way. Right. So, again, first category, protecting your commitment to inspire. I'm saying just in the statement before I get into it, let's say you are committed to inspiring staff, students, parents, right? And when I say staff, I'm talking not only certificated, but you're non-certificated. I'm saying that you've got to protect that commitment, right? Because it is, it is so easy to become distracted by just life. So as life unfolds, as life happens, it's easy for you to lose what you had because you did not protect it. Like when you protect your, 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 your loved ones or when you protect items of value, when you protect your car, your house and, 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 and others, right? So I'm saying you got to protect your commitment 
to inspire. So my first question for you, you know, I'm a question guy. I'm a self-reflection guy. You know, everything we do is self-reflection. So my first overarching question to go with that is, does my staff consider me to be an inspiring school leader, right? Once again, hold up your mirror to yourself and ask yourself, this thing is so big. I got to get my small one. I meant to buy it yesterday, but I forgot. You got a small mirror over there? So again, does my staff consider me to be an inspiring school leader? And I would ask you the question, how do you take your school or the teachers that you supervise, assistant principals, how do you take them to another level if you're not considered inspirational? Now, when I say inspirational, I did not say charismatic. They're not, they're not synonymous. I'm saying, what is it about you and your presence that inspires folks to continue to fight, particularly in the context of a pandemic? So I want you to just hold your mirror up to yourself and ask yourself, does my staff consider me to be an inspiring school leader? Because one of the, one of the ingredients that staff nationwide, if not worldwide, we're looking for for the past two years, and I would dare say going into this year, is they're looking for some source of energy in the building that keeps them inspired throughout difficult times. So, so, so now that was my broad overarching. Now, specific to you, because I want to bring in the communication part now. What is it about my verbal communication that is uplifting to staff? Right. Once again, and I can see I'm going to have to break this into two parts because that my, my, my whole so, spiel soliloquy relative to Frederick Douglass ate up my whole session. So we'll break this up. So what is it about my verbal communication that is uplifting to staff? So here, here you are. You, you got to look at you. And think about how you speak to staff, think about your communication with staff and ask yourself, and I, and I want to keep saying, I'm not talking about being charismatic. That, that is not relevant here. I'm talking about you being yourself, but yourself being one that just authentically inspires others, because that's what leadership is. As leader, you're not doing everything. You're accomplishing goals through other people. So as you're accomplishing goals and objectives through other people, that's where your inspiration has to kick in. Not just your directives, right? But your inspiration, just the fact that you are able to inspire someone else to take their game to another level. So I'm asking you, what is it about my verbal communication that is uplifting to staff? And I'll couple that with, what is it about my ver verbal communication that is encouraging to staff? Would your staff members, any of your staff members, even two, have a conversation in the parking lot about you saying there's nothing encouraging about our leader? There's nothing encouraging about the assistant principals. There's nothing encouraging about being in that school. Is there a chance that teachers in your building would go out into the parking lot or, or, or huddle up in the hallway or in the class or in a classroom or somewhere where they have privacy and have a conversation about you that there's nothing encouraging about that person or there's nothing uplifting about that person or there's nothing inspiring about that person. See, you got to hold this up on that. You got you to gotta hold this up and you got to ask yourself, what is it? Let me face. Let me face me on this one. What is it about me that inspires my staff to continue to operate at a high level? See, I and, and let me be vulnerable and transparent. I have to ask myself that question for this broadcast. I have to ask myself that question for every time I speak to an audience. If what is it? What is it about me? that inspires a staff. I was, I spoke somewhere recently and I got a standing ovation, right? 
And the, 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 the person that was in charge said, you really did an outstanding job. And, and, you know, I felt good about myself. They said, no, you don't understand. The person said, I've been I've been at this conference for 20 years and we brought everybody to somebody here. They said to me, we've this audience has never given a standing ovation before. That's not that's just not the culture of this conference. They said by you getting a standing ovation. That was that was, that that was something very different. That's that was a different kind of experience. But when she said it, I reflected. I said, but I, I, when I prepared for it, I was giving my all because I'm not just on a stage just to talk and make money. I'm on a stage to hopefully impact lives. I'm on a stage, hopefully, to maybe transform. No, not maybe. Hopefully to transform practices, right? Impact lives, transform practices. So the standing ovation is, is like the response is saying, you did you did what you set out to do. That's what it is. Now, everybody's not going to stand. I know that. Sometimes the culture is just so thick that we just ain't standing. I don't care if you brought God in here. We ain't standing. You know, so, so I understand that. But, but to have that kind of feedback, it spoke to these two questions I just threw at you. What is it about my verbal communication that is uplifting to staff? What is it about my verbal communication that is encouraging to staff right so that you know that's 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 what i'm talking so i want you to just think about i hope you're writing these notes man because because I, I can't get this to you, you got to see me in person to get this but this what i'm sharing with you now none of this is 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 information i i, I deal with on the road this is this is all I'm, I'm teasing this these new books i'm writing over the next three years so so i'm just teasing this is just excerpts from the books right three years book a, a, assistant principal two three and four the new one, 2023, 2024 be the next one, 2025 be the next one. And hopefully God let me live that long, right? So, so here we go. Number two, protecting your approachability. Let me see what Tammy says. Sir, some, some people on here, when they, they speak, I got to listen, man. So, uh, it's about more than having career. Yeah, yeah, which you definitely have. But I appreciate that. But it's about your ability to inspire people inspire see Tammy thank you for that because see let me let me say to somebody out there you could be one that's like laid back let me let me talk that way till I move up a little closer so you can hear me like laid back monotone in your speech but the way you speak to people is still inspiring you quiet you low-keyed Right. You're not all like Principal Cafele, man. I'm yelling and carrying on. You, 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 you like, like, and you even said to you, I can't be like that, man. That ain't my personality. Right. So, so what, what Tammy is saying, you don't have to be. You, you, you could be like, you bring it down. You, you low key, man. You like, you know, you, 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 this is, this is, this is like who you are. High energy, right? This, this is who you are right here, right? But it's what you say. And it's the sincerity. That comes with it. It's the authenticity that comes with it that it still brings about the same effect as someone who may be a little louder than me, be a little bit more loquacious, right? It's still gonna bring about the same effect. It's 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 all in how you deliver it, right? Man, I got fam. Right, what's all this fam doing on here that I'll, man, we got, we got my Aunt Judy on here. I hear you loud and clear. Keep up the amazing work. Keep the, I, I appreciate you. Bam! That's my P, that's my P funk, man. Parliament Funkadelic. Right? So, so let me go to the next one. Protecting your approachability. Man. Yo, I might mess around and do this whole thing and stay on here for like two or three hours. I don't, you know, all, all the worst that could happen, you got to leave. I could talk, I could sit here and talk to myself, right? Uh, protecting your approachability, right? So like, here's the overarching question. Does my staff consider me to be an, to be a, an approachable school leader, right? So before we get to the communication part, does my staff consider me to be an approachable school leader right see y'all know this and some of you may know it because it's you you know if i could be frank and honest with you and that and that's and that's a scare an area that you would have to work on 
That's a skill set that you would have to work on. There are people in our world, whether it be the world at large or in schools, who are just not approachable. Like, 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 like certain people you see, like I've had these people in my life. I'm not, I ain't dealing with that person. I find the middle man and they, I'll get to them. And then they could go to that person because this person's intimidating, man. Or this person is, is, is evil, right? Or, or this person has, is, is, is got a posture of don't mess with me. Right. So I'm saying as you develop your approachability, you've got to protect your approachability first because life happens life unfolds stress happens frustration kicks in and you could get to a point where you were gun ho in august or september and then life got so complicated that you became unapproachable because you didn't protect your approachability, and now people who used to be very comfortable with coming to you now run from you. You hear me? Folks who were very comfortable with coming to you now run away from you because you don't seem approachable anymore because you did not protect your approach ability, right? So therefore, my question is, does my staff consider me to be an approachable school leader. I got the mirror up, y'all. Let me put it here so y'all don't be seeing too much, right? Oh, man, right there, right? So I don't care what you see. So so therefore, I'm asking you again, does my staff consider me to be an approachable school leader? Put your mirror up and look at yourself and ask yourself, how does staff perceive you? How do students perceive you? But my focus here is staff. But how do students perceive you? How do parents perceive you? Do they feel comfortable approaching you, right? So does my staff consider me to be an approachable school leader? Now, let me throw in the, the communication aspect. What is it about my verbal communication that my staff feel comfortable seeking out my support? Once again, what is it about my verbal communication that my staff feel comfortable seeking out my support? So it's one thing to lead by example. People talk about that all the time, leading by example. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this and I'm going to stand on it. Everything starts with your spoken word. You can lead by example all you want. But at some point, you got to talk. And your words matter. Let me say that again for someone that may, may not realize it. Your words matter. With the volume of people that watch this virtual academy every Saturday, whether it be live or the videos later, apparently my words matter to some people, right? So, so, I, so I take that very seriously, very seriously. And that's why I prepare, right? So I'm saying to you, let me go to give you the question again. What is it about my verbal communication that my staff feel comfortable seeking, seeking out my support, right? So in other words, you got staff on, you, you, you got teachers. Yeah, Judy, my, I, I left my mirror, my, my small mirror on a podium in Washington, D.C., man. I'm, I'm so mad about that. So I got to find another small one, right? I, I, I haven't been, every store sells ones I don't want. So that's why I got the big joint. I use this to shave. <laughs> so, so what is it about my verbal communication that my staff feel comfortable seeking out my support? So you got staff, you, you, you got you got staff, right? And, and, and I don't care if it's your veteran teachers. Everybody needs support. Everybody needs support from the leadership, right? So, so I'm asking you to ask yourself relative to your approachability and your communication the staff feel comfortable based on how you use words. See, the words you speak and the way they come out matters. And as I always say, words are like an arrow. Some people say bullet, but I don't like to use that, that analogy. Words are like an arrow. Once you release it, you can't retrieve that arrow. It's going until it reaches its destination, whether it be the target or you miss the target and it lands in the grass somewhere, but you can't pull it out of midair. Once you release it, it's gone. So your words, once you release those words, 
That's it, man. That's it. They're, they're out there. So, so what you said, but the way in which you said it, right? I appreciate you, Brenda. Uh, that, I, I had a great time in Louisville as well. I'll be in Louisville again uh, next Sunday. Not this, not tomorrow, but next Sunday at the National Association of Elementary School Principals Conference. I'll be there Sunday morning doing two sessions, right? So, so I'm saying to you, you got to be cognizant of that. But then I got a follow up question. What is it about my verbal communication that my staff feel comfortable bringing new ideas to me? Right. Again, what is it about my verbal communication that my staff feel comfortable bringing new ideas to me? So do I communicate with my staff in a way that they feel comfortable in approaching me with these new ideas that they have generated that they feel would work in our school or in the teacher's classroom? Do I communicate with my staff in a way that they feel very comfortable and open to come to me to seek out my support? Right. In the house, I'm talking to you. Oh, right. So I'm saying family stuff, y'all. So, 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 so I'm saying here, you have to check you, and then ultimately you have to, you you have to protect your approachability because if your verbal communication is such that folks are not comfortable with coming to you, then they can't seek out your support. They can't seek out. Your, your, your approval of new ideas because the way you communicate with staff, you've placed a barrier between you and staff and now you have no approachability because you didn't protect it. Let's move on. Hit that share button. Hit that retweet button. Let them know we here. Number three, protecting your relatability. Huh. Write that down. Write that down. You good, Rodney? Protect you, but you definitely want to see the first half hour of this. Oh, man, I got so much family on here this morning. This is my cousin, Dashaun Farad. If you saw us together, you, you swear we were brothers, but we, we cousins, right? But that's 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 my cousin, Hotep to you. That's my cousin, Dashaun Farad. Good to see you, Dashaun Farad. Dashaun, when I finish this, check out my first half hour, man. I want you to see that, right? So, so um, but I'm going to be on here for a while. I got so much to say. But protecting your relatability. Right. Your relatability. Somebody might say, what's hotep mean? That's ancient comedic language. What's what's comedic comes from the word Kemet, K-E-M-I-T. What's Kemet? Ancient Egypt. Egypt is not the original name of Egypt. E Egypt is a European name that was given to it by the Greeks. The original name of that area, which we call Egypt, is called Kemet. K-E-M-E-T, K-E-M-I-T. And the way that the people greeted one another was hotep. H-O-T-E-P, which means peace. So when I was a principal, anybody on here that knows me from my principal days, you know that every day I greeted the entire school by saying Hotep. So when I was at uh, North Tech Hotep to my North Tech family, at Sojourner Truth Hotep to my Sojourner Truth family, at Healy Hotep to my Healy family, at Hubbard Hotep to my Hubbard family. I greeted everybody Hotep. Right. We so so what what what's a better way to greet an entire school community than to say Hotep, which means peace, but give it to them in a language that's ancient, but but a language that's ancient in the rolling flowing through their veins. We're talking about black children, right? So black children speaking into speaking to them in a language that goes back four, five, six thousand years ago, right? So that's that's how that was done. So I want so I'm, I'm still teaching, man. I'm on my lesson. But my but my cousin came on here and said hotep to me. So I got to let you know what hotep means. Right. So that's how that's how, that's how we did that. Uh, unapologetically, the whole city knew the mayor knew the, the superintendent knew we say hotep. We ain't saying good morning. Right. We ain't saying good afternoon. I see him in the hallway. It's hotep, Mr. Cafele. That's how we did it. I see him outside on the grounds. Hotep, Mr. Cafele. I say hotep to whoever they are. My security, Hotep, Mr. Cafe. Like we, the whole school, the teachers, that's what we did, right? So that's, you know, that ain't part of my, I, I need to make that a part of my my, my workshops too. I, that's not part of my workshops either, man. It's so much to me that's not in my <laughs> workshops. Oh, he ain't feeling well, is he? Oh, okay. All right, so, so here we go. Protecting your relatability. I'm saying that you got to be relatable, man. 
how how you going, my man? I got my face frowned up on this one, right? How you going to lead? And no one can relate to you. <laughs> how you going to lead? And and it's like the teachers and staff. I mean, the teach the, the staff and students see you as like like it's 2022, and they see you. You you seem like an 80s person, right? You seem like a 90s person. How they gonna relate to you? Are you relatable? So as you develop your relatability, man, you got to protect it. You got to stay current in today's times. See, you, you, you can't, you can't fall back. You watch a Joe Clark movie, Lean on Me, and then you trying to be Joe Clark. That was the 80s, man. You can't do no Joe Clark style in 2022 within a post-pandemic, not po I mean within a pandemic, not post-pandemic, but within a pandemic. See, you you can't do that. So you have to understand that you've got to be relatable. So my question is, does my staff consider me to be a relatable school leader, right? Does my staff consider me to be a relatable school leader? So my specific question, man, he going crazy in here. My specific question as a, I got, you know, we got, we got the, the dog here, my daughter's dog. Someone told me on Facebook, they said, stop saying your daughter's dog and say your grand dog, right? So, um, he, he, I don't know what's happening, but he running around here like he in the park, right? So uh, you better bring it down, right? So uh, so anyway, I'm saying here, I, let, let me get my train of thought back. So the, so the communication aspect of this protecting your relatability, what is it about my verbal communication that my staff can relate to me? So and So as you talk to your staff, I, 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 do you relate to your staff as one that understands contemporary times? Or, are you, or, or do you talk to your staff as one who is in, in, you know, in a time warp? Like you're, like you're still back 20 years ago, 30 years ago, right? Do you, how do you go about protecting your relatability, right? And coupled with that, what is it about my verbal communication that my staff perceive that I can relate to them. Now that question is much more potent than the first one when I said that my staff can relate to me. I'm saying can they perceive that they that um that that that, that I can relate to them. I'm trying to read the the comments and, and speak at the same time. So I got myself this one kind of caught my attention. Oh my God, this was my principal, right? That caught my attention. So so not that, and, and for those of you that I don't put up, I don't see all of these comments. You know, I am on here live, so I'm not like reading, you know, some of them are short and I can just catch them real quick, right? So um, let me let me put my man, Stephen Jones on here. Stephen Jones, I got you on my long list too. You know, you you know, I got you on my list, man. It's just in my long, my list of, pretend, of future guests is like, it's extensive, man. It goes into year 2026, right? It's long, but we're going to get you. So so what is what is it about my verbal communication that that um, that my staff can relate to me? And what is it about my verbal communication that my staff perceive that I can relate to them? Right. And, and see, when there's a breakdown there and staff has this perception that you can't relate like like let's let's say like this. I, I'm going to give you a real good, like vulnerable, transparent um, example. I remember. In the in the in the last few years of my principalship, folks were starting to come in for interviews with tattoos, which I had never seen before. I'm, I'm, I want y'all to hear this. This, is my, this might be the most important thing I say today. No, no, nothing will be more important in the first thirty minutes, right? But but um, folks were coming in with tattoos on their arms, and it was turning me off. And I'm like, how do I hire this person with these tattoos, man? So I was, you know, I'm old school thinking, you know, anybody coming to no interview with no tattoos, old school, right? So now I'm like, so then as time went on and I'm seeing it more, I said, wait a minute. I'm not evolving with the times. Y'all hear me. I want you to hear me. I'm not evolving. I'm stuck. 
I'm stuck in 1980 and eight and 90, early 2000. And, and, and the world is changing. The world is shifting. And young people in particular, they're shifting. Young people of 2000. So let's, let's see that this was like the years 2009, 10, 11, because that's those are my last years. So young people of 2009, 10, 11 were not the young people I was in eight, when I was in my 20s, in eight, like I was 24 and 84. So 20, so 84, 85, 86, that's a different time. So I'm literally in interviews judging candidates not on their, their potential skill set to the school. I'm judging them on their forearms. I can't get past their forearms. I'm seeing tattoos and I'm like, I can't use this person. So in other words, I couldn't relate to them. And if we had deep enough conversation, they probably would perceive that I can't relate to them. So let, so now hear me somebody. I don't know that everybody talks at this real, right? I, I, don't, I don't, you know, I, I'm, I'm 61, what I'm holding back for at 61, right? So I'm saying to you, I had to grow. I had to evolve. I had to see that, okay, what the tattoo have to do with his ability or her ability to take these children to the promised land, so to speak, as high achievers in the classroom. Now, if you got some gun on your arm, right, or some, some gang set, then, then, then that's a different story. We ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the art, right? So I don't want to lose someone. Yo, I've been with you, Kefele, for a hundred... 14 weeks, but you just lost me today. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm talking, I, you know, it's it's different. I don't see too many young people without tattoos these days. I don't. I don't, my daughter's sitting over here with tattoos, man. I, I, I just don't see it. So I can't judge people on a tattoo. That's my point. Now, but when I talk about relating to contemporary people, I'm not confining that to tattoos, though. I'm saying the whole totality, man. You know, like, for example, there's young people that are applying for jobs that have a very different historical, cultural, political, social consciousness than a whole lot of folks who were looking for jobs 20, 30 years ago. See, a lot of young people that have that historical social, political, cultural consciousness that I actually brought, I had to hide mine. I had to close the door and make sure that the coast was clear before I brought out my miseducation of the Negro, right? Today, this person coming in the interview for the job, they ain't trying to hide that. They, 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 they trying to say like, yo, this, this is what's necessary. But the but the but but and, and I'm gonna say to you right now, and they are correct. They are correct. But now, as leader that's interviewing them, does that person understand that? Are you relatable? And do they perceive that 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 you relate to them? Because someone comes in who's very astute as it relates to social justice issues. You can't think this person is a detriment to your school because they're intelligent, because that's all it means. They're intelligent. They're bright. They're well read. They've been around the right people. You got you. You have to grow up in your leadership and not think about this being a 1970 school, a 1980 school, or you may bring in somebody that rocks the boat. No, they bring in an ingredient that's been missing for a very long time. So, again. You've got to protect that relatability as you, you as you get to know these young folks that are coming in. The, because, see, you can't change them and try to remold them and reshape them into being what you want them to be. Because then you chase them away from the profession and now they don't want to be in it because they can't be themselves. Now, I don't mean when I say themselves, I don't mean anything reckless. But I mean that the twenty the twenty first century young person is a different entity from the twentieth century young person. The world has shifted; it's a different world. There was no cry of Black Lives Matter back in those days, for example. Right? We were talking about civil rights movement, right? It's Black Power movement. 
but the, but 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 the world has evolved and as leaders we have to evolve with it and that's not to confine this discussion to blacks either that's that I, I i can say the same thing with my puerto rican brothers and sisters my dominican brothers and sisters my mexican brothers and sisters and, and asian and, and native american etc it doesn't matter what i'm saying is that we've got to be relatable but they have to perceive that we are relatable that's what i'm saying right in terms of being able to make all that work in the school that's your discussions with your staff in terms of making it work so that we don't have fraction ha have friction within the school and then we're fragmented because of different viewpoints we got to respect one another right we got to respect one another's views on everything that we do right so let's keep going i ain't gonna keep y'all all day man i got so much i got 18 of these and i'm only on number four right um I got another question on that relatability that I, I I didn't highlight this one. I was just going to go, I was going to gloss over it, but since I'm not going to do the whole thing, let me, let me hit it. It said, what is, what is it about my verbal communication that demonstrates to my staff that I am in touch with the times? Again, what is it about my verbal communication that demonstrates to my staff that I am in touch with the times? So let me let me let me let me say this one. Let's say, for example, I remember very young me had 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 whatever viewpoint I had on the youngsters that joined a gang, right? Like, like, like I was very hardcore on my position. Now I'm still hardcore that I wish that they wouldn't make that decision. But I had to grow and evolve into understanding why the decisions were made to join. See, I didn't fully understand that nor embrace it as a very young rookie principal. I was just hardcore. You got to stop that. But as I grew, I understood the pressures that are out here in the world that a young person would make the decision of joining a gang, in this case, just out of survival. Survival outside of the school. Survival in his or her neighborhood. See, I couldn't relate to that at one point. So, but so, so as time went on, I said, oh, so if student didn't join, student's life could be at risk, right? Stu 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 student safety could be at risk. So I couldn't relate to that in, in, in my younger years. I had to grow into understanding that. So I'm saying to you, I'm not condoning gang membership. So, so I don't want to be misconstrued by anybody, but I'm saying I had to grow to understand the reality of the times upon which the children exist. And some of us, we, we, you know, some of us are not even from that type of environment. So we're trying to educate and enlighten young people based on an environment that we know that they know nothing about. So they know nothing about this, this, this little picket fence environment that you want them to re relate to. They know something very hardcore you know, concrete jungle type of thing, right? But you as the educator, you as the leader, you may not know that. So you trying to bring them around to, you, you know, the, your, your picket fence type mentality, which is redlined anyway, they can't live there, right? Redlined and steered out of there, but you want them to think along those lines and they can't relate to it. So therefore you're not relatable. So you got to build your relatability to the extent that now you can protect your relatability as the years progress. I know I said a lot in that one, probably needed it in PowerPoint, but I hope I think you got my point, right? Let me let me give you one or two more. Number four, protecting your likability. Your likability. Does my staff consider me to be a likable school leader? Let's think about that one for a minute. The staff even like you. Are there members of staff, large enough member, large enough number of staff that they could? Um, yeah, some. Let me put this on here because that's true. I read every comment after these broadcasts, right? I, it's on four. We're on four platforms. It's 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 sometimes it's over. It's it's two thousand literally comments. I read them all. So so for someone that doesn't realize, no, I read. I just don't read them live. 
right? Because it's, it's just because because it, it would take away from the broadcast, from the message, right? So thank you for that, uh, uh, Adrian. So so I'm saying to you, let's think about that. Here you lead in a school and you got people that don't even like you. You got to be likable to lead. I mean, it's it's a job. Everybody's in there. It's their job. We get that, right? So you ain't, you're not there to like people. But let me tell you something. If you didn't notice, as Biggie said, now you know. When that school can look at itself, meaning the, the, the humans in the building, can look at itself as a family, that has each has one another's back that support one another that are there for one another that are lifting one another that school is going to go much further than that school that where the mentality is this is my job i do what i do and then i go home those are two different entities i always say the difference between a good school and a or the difference between yeah a good school and a bad school or a high performing school and a low performing school the difference between the two people write all sorts of analyses on on the difference between the two people do dissertations on them i i can give you this and let me see five words the people in the building period the difference between the good school the bad school the people in the building period that's it but leadership brings all that together that's the thing leadership brings all that together but how you gonna bring that together and nobody likes you because you're not like a ball see not see 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 to say no one likes you is one thing to say you're not like a ball is a totally different conversation See, like a bull. That means people are not, because look at the words. I mean, let's elaborate it. Like a bull. So like a bull. Let's just take the able. You're not like a, it's, people are not able to like you. So now you got to go to the mirror on that one. And you got to ask yourself, why is it that people are not able to like me? Not the question, and it's, this is not the same question as why don't people like me? That's a different question. That's a different topic. Why aren't people able to like me? What is it about my likability that it doesn't exist, right? So I'm saying to you, you got to make sure that you work on that skill set that you become a likable person. Of course, there are people in the building that we may not need to like us. We get that too, but that even is a different conversation. But I'm saying to you, all things being equal, you want to be likable coupled with respected and appreciated. But if folks can't even like you because of your leadership character, maybe, right? You're, you, they, they see flaws in your leadership or your leadership character. It's hard to like you under those circumstances so in terms let, now let's kick in the verbal communication because that's what we're talking about leadership communication detail so watch this what is it about my verbal communication that i am likable by my staff we're talking about the way you talk to staff now what is it about the way you communicate with them that there's a potential for likability like, I like this person. I respect this person. I appreciate this person. What is it about my verbal communication that my staff perceive that I like them, right? So we're taking likability to uh, two, two way street like I did with relatability. Again, what is it about my verbal communication that my staff perceive that I like them? Hmm. Yeah. You could like, so in other words, you could have staff in the building that you genuinely, I like this teacher. I like this, this teacher here. I like this teacher here. But this teacher goes home stressing, I'm convinced the principal doesn't like me. And, and therefore the principal is taking out things against me, right? Saying things to, because of perception, right? Perception. So I'm saying to you, 
That's why this I'm, I got I'm big on this thing protecting. You got to build your likability, but then you got to protect it. You got to lock it down over a period of time so that as, as time progresses, new staff come into the building, old staff retire, that still that likability is present. Again, what is it about my verbal communication that my staff perceive that I like them or staff perceive that I don't really like them because as Daniel Saunders said, perception is reality. And then I, I was going to gloss over this last one, but since I'm at the end, let me give you this. What is it about my verbal communication that I demonstrate to my staff that I like them? Right. So I, so, you know, so I kind of said that within the commentary, so I don't need to go deep into that, but, um, Whitney said, when's that book coming out? Uh, 2023, uh, Whitney, May of 2023, the assistant principal 50 volume two, and then volume three, the year after and volume four, the year after I'm breaking it up into four volumes, but you know, I keep my book short. You know that I don't, I don't do somebody said to me on Twitter yesterday or Facebook, they said, let me know when you combine all four. I'm like, that day ain't coming, right? I keep my book short. I don't write them thick books. Like, you know, I just don't do it. So here we go. Look here, y'all. I told you I got 18 of these. Do me a favor. Rock with me until I finish number six, right? That way I could do 12 next week. In, 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 I mean, mm -hmm. next first Saturday, which would be uh, August, right? So just let me get these two more in, and then I'm going to close it out. Number five and number six, and then we'll get the rest later. Number five says protecting your dependability once again protecting your dependability the broad question the overarching question does my staff consider me to be a dependable school leader in other words i'm just asking can staff depend on your leadership within various different capacities right can staff depend on you right so 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 i got for this I just got individual questions. I don't have like a bunch of questions for this. I kept this short. What is it about my verbal communication that I am considered dependable by my staff, right? Once again, what is it about my verbal communication that I am considered dependable by my staff? So I'm, I'm taking these broad categories, like I said, protecting your dependability. Then I asked the question, does my staff consider me to be a dependable school leader? But this is all coming under this category of communication, people skills, right? So I want to make sure that I that, 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 that I do that justice. And I'm saying here, what is it about my verbal communication? I want you to think about your dialogue with staff. What is it about my verbal communication that I am considered dependable? Now, of course, your actions are going to speak very loud. But, there's, but there are no actions without words because you still have to articulate. Imagine, so, so, so let me give you the scenario for that to become concrete. Imagine you're dependable. You, you, come, you come through for staff, but then you're in the staff meeting complaining about the fact that you had to do it, right? So you came through. Staff were able to depend on you. But you complained, the whole, you were kicking, you, you were kicking and screaming the whole way. Well, then your verbal communication is not consistent with your actions. So, so staff is not going to therefore fall on what you did. They're going to fall on what you say. You, you made yourself dependable to them in a given scenario. But then at the staff meeting, you complained that you had to do it. You complained about the sacrifice that you made, for example, right? So like if I went to, so, so to make it very concrete, if I went to bat for my staff with the superintendent, like I felt that something that came down the pipe um, wasn't in the best interest of staff, I didn't go to bat for them, become dependable, and then at the staff meeting complain. no. I want my words to them to be consistent with the action. So I want so so therefore my verbal communication was consistent with the action that I took whatever that may have been. So the question again 
what is my what is it about my verbal communication that I'm considered dependable by my staff? And then I said I was going to give you one more. Let me give you this one more. Reliability. It's, it really goes hand in glove with um and and yeah, and Josh just said that you can't fake the funk. So re- protecting your reliability, right? So so this is like a cousin of dependability, reliability. Does my staff consider me to be a reliable leader, right? So they cousins. So 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 here I'm asking the question, what is it about my verbal communication that I'm considered reliable by my staff? So it's one thing to be dependable. Staff can depend on you to come through. But can they rely on you to come through? They're cousins, but they're not synonymous. So 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 in other words, is your word, you know, old old school language here in the black community, is your word your bond? See, if you said you're going to do something, can staff depend on you that it's going to be done? You said so. So if you said, teacher, I'm going to have those 50 Chromebooks to you within within the month. Can staff rely upon your word that I'm going to receive those 50 Chromebooks? If you said, I'm going to help you, teacher, with X, Y, and Z, can staff rely on you that you are, in fact, going to help them with X, Y, and Z? If 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 you said that we're going to honor the honor roll students with this breakfast can i as the as, 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 as can i as staff coordinator of the of the honor roll program rely on you that this breakfast will in fact take place Nate, right so can i rely on you so here where the verbal communication kicks in because you as leader said to your staff or said to the to the to the advisor for the for the honor roll celebration you said to them that i'm going to come through so now can i rely on your word and then bring in its cousin can i depend on you to follow through with this see so they're cousins but they're not necess- they're not brother and sister they're cousin they're related so now let's go to the protecting So are you going to protect your reliability? Because, see, if you don't protect your reliability, then as staff, I can't rely on you anymore because I know you will say the right things. But you may not come through. See, you may say all the right things that galvanize the staff, that got us feeling like we are in the right place. This leader has got our back. This leader always comes through. But then when it's time to put up, because you know the phrase put up or shut up. So now it's time to put up. And we find that when that time comes, you spoke the right stuff, but you couldn't produce. Now we don't know moving forward if we can rely on your words. See, so now this brings us right full circle. You must be diligent and forthright about protecting your reliability. And and, 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 I, and I keep, you know, these words, relate ability. See, see, when you break them up like that, approach ability, as opposed to approachability, you got, you break them up, man, and they, and they take on a different kind of meaning. So relate ability do you have the ability to relate like ability is the the, the staff have the the, do you have the ability to like staff and vice versa depend ability can staff so do you have the ability to position yourself yourself that staff can depend on your ability to get it done rely ability do you have the ability to position yourself that staff can rely on your ability to get it done based on the words that you articulated? And it goes on. 
So, so, so next week, ne not next week, next first Saturday, which will be the first Saturday, man, can you believe, I cannot believe I'm saying the first Saturday in August. That's like, I can't, that, could, that can't even compute with me, right? But the first Saturday in August, we going we going we going to exhaust this. I'm just going to give you the topics. Um, protecting your empathy towards staff, protecting your compassion, protecting your trustworthiness, protecting your listening skills, protecting your reading room, reading the room skills, protecting your coaching, protecting your cheerleading, protecting your equitable practices and personification, protecting your commitment to empower others protecting your commitment to collaborate with others, protecting your problem-solving ability, and protecting your servanthood. I probably won't even finish all of this. That next, I probably have to spill this over into September. And then I still got the nonverbal. I didn't even get to that yet. So the bottom line, the good thing is <laughs> I, got, I, 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 I got a lot of content, y'all. And as, as those of you who weren't with me in that first half hour, I just, I'm just a vessel, man. God gives me what I need. And then I can put it on this platform, man. You know, so I, I got all this content that I didn't have. I didn't have any of this a, a month ago. I promise you that. It, it You know, I, it came to me and I just wrote it as it comes. A lot of times it happens on airplanes. I'm on a plane trying to write something and I don't have anything. And then um, it, I just, I just, you know, I just close my eyes. God says, get your pen and start writing. No, get your c computer out and start typing. I got you. And then I just I just get it, man. And and, I, and and it works the same way with you. You know, I just get it. Uh, one of my books, uh, I think it was the Assistant Principal 50. That's how I got started with that book because I couldn't come up with anything. And, and then God said, take that laptop. I was on a long flight and I just started typing. I hit my wife up later. I said, I can't believe it, man. When I boarded this flight, I had nothing. Now that I landed, this book is like I'm ready. Right. I, the whole outline was just written, you know, so you got to You got to listen. Right. You got to listen. You, 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 you got to listen to those to those to those to, to, to those God voices that come to you. I don't talk about I mean, talking about no people voices. I ain't you I mean, I mean, hear other people. Don't get me wrong, because, you know, I'm one of them people. Right. Hear other people. I see you out there, Doc. I want one of my colleagues out here. Where's she at here? Because she uses a different name from the name I know about. Where's she at here? Yeah, Sister White. There she is. Because, you know, I know Vera. So, so she just got her doctorate, man. So, uh, just for, you know, I see you on Facebook, Sister White. But now, cause now, now I see you virtually. Congrats on that doctorate degree. Right? And um, so, yeah. So, so yeah, folks. You know, so that's all. Uh, and, and, and also, before I close, let me remind everybody. You know, I'm a columnist for Learning Forward. Y'all know that organization, Learning Forward. Um, the, the professional development organization. I'm a columnist for the 2022 year. So um, my articles um, just, 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 just write learning forward magazine dash Baruti Kafele, right? B-A-R-U-T-I learning forward dash Baruti Kafele. And my, the three articles I've written, the newest one just came out. I didn't even post it yet. I don't No, I did post it. So you can check those out. And then I got to write my fourth one. I got a July 8th deadline. As soon as you finish one, they like, all right, time to write the next one. I'm like, oh, my God, give me time to breathe. But that's what it is when you got a column. So I'm blessed to have that. And uh, so I want you to, you know, check them out. I wrote them. So I wrote them for people to read. So read those, y'all. Read them. Learning Forward. And then I'm the keynote speaker at the Learning, Learning Forward conference this year in December. But, you know, we got we got months to talk about that. But you can register now. Right. So learning forward, I'm the keynote. One of the keynotes is three of us. So um, you can register for that. And I see you then. Anybody going to the National Association of Elementary School Principals Conference in Louisville, you know, I'm going to be speaking there for two hours. So um, next Sunday. So get yourself registered and I see you in Louisville next Sunday. Right. With that said, y'all, I appreciate you being here. Those of you that checked in late, I urge you, I encourage you, I implore you. Go back and watch this at the beginning and watch my first 30 minutes. When I talked about Frederick Douglass juxtaposed with the Fourth of July, I uh, I want you to see that. I wish professors would show that in their their classrooms, high schools would show it in their their classrooms, middle school as well, maybe even elementary. But I'm I'm um, I'm quite pleased with everything I said in that first half hour as as I juxtaposed Frederick Douglass with the Fourth of July. So please go back and watch that, share it, let people know. Give them some perspective with the, with, with the 4th of July holiday. It's not a critique or criticism of the 4th of July. It's just to say that you need some historical 
a foundation with with your understanding of contemporary Fourth of July. Thank you, uh, Dr. Melissa um, Chester. The virtual, the Black Educators Rock virtual conference again for those of you that checked in late this weekend, July 9, 10, and eleven. I wish I had all them names in front of me of all the presenters, but I'm one of them. She, Dr. Melissa Chester, the founder of Black Educators Rock, is one of them. My man, Dr. Chica Akua, my, my man, Carlos Johnson, my man, Dr. Marcus Jackson, my man, Dr. Uh, Sean Hurt, but it's more. My man, LaRue Fitch, who was um, one of our guests uh, on this pra on this platform, he's he's another presenter. Um, man, Melissa, put some names on this chat, man. I can't think of them all. I know they're going to be, man, he left me out, man. What's up with that? Uh, who else is on it? Dr. Phil Hickman, uh, he's another one. Um it's and it's it's more, y'all. Just just tune in. It's three days, July 9, 10, and 11. Scroll on my page, you'll see a poster with, with all our pictures on it. I'll put a current one up today in a few minutes and uh just register. And we'll see you on July 9, 10, and 11 virtually uh next week. Now, of course, I'm gonna be on live, you know. So of course, I'm not gonna be on the, the, the black educators rock during this moment. You know, I'll be here and then I'm gonna switch back, right? So you do that. Other than that, y'all, I'm rambling, y'all. Have a great week. Have an extraordinary week. Have your best week yet. Peace. Peace. Thumbs up. Cock that fist back all the way. Count the three. One, two, three. Bam. I'll see y'all next Saturday. Be safe out here. Watch your diet, get that exercise in, protect yourself because COVID is still here. COVID, I'll say this to you, COVID hit my family hard this week. All right, I'm going to leave it there. I ain't getting all in specifics because I'm already, I already signed off, but I'm going to tell you again, not my nuclear family here, but COVID hit my family hard this week. We were in the hospital all night last night, all night. Right. Last night, COVID hit us hard. So so don't don't be out here talking about this post pandemic. Oh, I don't need a mask anymore. Are you kidding me? It's, it's folks getting the, in each other's faces, give asymptomatic, giving other people COVID and they don't even know they got it. That's what's happening all over this country, all over this world. Right. So don't 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 allow yourself to be all post pandemic. It ain't post pandemic. We in this bad boy thick right now. We in it. It ain't going nowhere. Like, like what you think? It magically disappeared because the weather got warm. It doesn't work that way. It is here. My wife gave me this blue one last night. Now, do you think. You know, I'm rocking my Black Barons, Birmingham Black Barons. You think I, like, want to be, like, I, I want the whole package, like my face, my jersey. But, but, but you know, I, I got to I gotta rock this. I look like a surgeon, right, and, and a baseball player from the Negro League. But it's all good, man. That means I'm protecting others from me. Let me say that one more time. I'm sorry, y'all. You know, I said, I said peace and bam. I'm supposed to be gone, right? I'm still here. Listen, God been moving in me this today. I'm going to tell you all that. He said, don't you sign off of here and you didn't talk to them about this about, about this pandemic. Hey, y'all, listen. It didn't disappear. It's here. It's here. So, and, and I'm going to be back on them planes soon. And I'm going to say this. <laughs> don't get on them planes and you all high and mighty. I don't need a mask no more. And you're going to sit up there coughing, sitting next to me, in front of me, behind me, you coughing and carrying on, you sneezing. That's 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 not cool. That's disrespecting me. Because the whole idea of the mask is to protect others. The, the mask ain't for protecting you. The mask is not for me to protect me. The mask is for me to protect you from me. I don't know if I'm asymptomatic. I got two boosters in me. I could be asymptomatic. I don't know. But since I don't know, let me throw on the mask. And that way I protect you from me. Dr. Houston said double mask. See, my
My son had a double mask last night. I saw we was all in the hospital last night. My son, he was wearing a double mask. And he always does that too. Right? So enough said, y'all. I made my point. I see you next Saturday. To the newbies, I'm not typically this. Well, nah, I'd be lying. I guess I am typically this. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, hey, I'm done, y'all. It's free. How you somebody wants to say, I like Cafe Lay, but he but he goes too long. And I like, I'm like, really? You 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 fixed your mouth and your face to say that? I go free content? Like, turn it off. <laughs> Ain't nobody making you watch this. Like, if, if I go too long, just shut me down, man. Put on uh put put on put on some hip hop, man. They talking good stuff lately. <laughs> put that on, right? So it's free. So if I go long, man, it's like you just getting more stuff. <laughs> you complain, man. I don't like Kafele because he gives too much information. That's what you're saying. Kafele be like he be dropping too many nuggets. I, I don't need that many. Kafele, he dropping too many gems, man. He he dropping too many like like information, too much information to get me that job. I don't, I don't want all that. I want to be somewhat confused, right? I don't I don't want all the answers, right? So, 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 like, Kafele, just do like a half hour and then let me just go to the interview, like, like, ignorant, right? Like, like, I don't know nothing. And, and I'll feel better because you are gnawing so long. <laughs> or, or go to the school and here you could have been that strong instructional leader, right? I'm talking like one of them days when I'm spending like two hours on instructional leader or what my guest. Man, I like Kafele, man, but he he stay on too long. I like when, once I hit thirty minutes, just cut it off, right? Cut it off, right? And then, like, yeah, that's better. He ain't on so long. Like, like I don't know, I don't know my instructional leadership the way like he teaches it, but that's all right. You know, I don't need to know it. I just don't want to. He he he, he spent too much time giving us all this this information, and like I ain't have to ask the board for like four thousand dollars to fly to lodge. To, to eat, to, to, to ground transportation. I just had to turn on my phone, man, and watch this dude for free. He go too long, man. Let me go to the board and see if they could fork up $4,000 for me to travel to the conference for two days. Oh, y'all get the point, man. Let me get out of here, y'all. I got I got a whole day to leave, man, to have. I see y'all next week, man. <laughs> Peace.